I'm Judy Clem. On behalf of the Friends of the Oak Park Conservatory, we are delighted to welcome you to our final Learn and Grow lecture for tonight on Container Companions featuring Ellen Huner, which we're so excited to host with Ellen. Um, this lecture series began a few years ago as a lead into our annual plant sale. And it was really a, a way for us to do outreach into the community to help educate and inspire gardeners to become more confident in their endeavors. And I can tell you just from what I've learned these past few weeks, and Kayla has been at my side for all of them, and Ellen's been at a lot of them as well. There's just been so much rich information we have shared with our community, and I have learned and sponged up every bit of it. So um, let me just um, share with you our 35th um, anniversary is happening this year. Um, we have been in this community for such a long time supporting the conservatory. And at this time, um, for over 32 years, we've been uh, sponsoring with the Park District of Oak Park and the conservatory, our annual plant sale. So that is happening right now. And many of the um, names I see on tonight's um, talk have actually been volunteers caring for those plants that we're selling um, through the sale. Uh, we do still have a nice selection of edibles. I was there today, the basil is exquisite. Visit. If you haven't picked out your basil yet or you have room for more, I highly recommend it. Um, there's still lots of edibles and other herbs available. And also, I just want to put a plug in. We are trying some new pots out this year. We're using something called a cow pot. It's actually a compostable pot. And um, it's something that we just wanted to test out in, in exchange for the traditional plastic pots. In addition, we're also recycling those plastic pots this year. So there's more information on that on our website, but I just wanted to share with you that we are really trying to be more sustainable. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce our special guests this evening, Master Gardener, Ellen Kuhner. For many years, Ellen worked for Burson Marsteller. It's a part of a huge communication uh, giant WPP and is now called BCW or Burson Conan Wolf. And while there, she did corporate product and issues research. Since Ellen stopped working for money, a term she prefers to retired, she has become busier than ever pursuing her favorite interests, which include gardening, classical music, architecture, and cooking. She loves to garden even now in her limited space, just a big raised bed and a large balcony. Ellen has deep roots with the Friends of the Oak Park Conservatory. She joined in the early 1990s and then joined the board in 2008. Since then, she served as president for four years of our organization. <clears throat> and she continues to work in the ops room or help with the plant sale, wash pots, and help with special events such as the one I mentioned coming up this weekend and much more. Ellen is an anchor for our organization and um, we're so happy to have her with us here tonight. In addition, I just wanna um, introduce Kayla Chase. She is our membership chair and she has helped organize most of the lectures that we've had um, this season, um, this whole last year with me. And so she's also a new master gardener. So I'm delighted to have her joining tonight. She will run our chat and our Q&A. Last week, we learned a lot about planting vegetables in containers and in raised beds. And tonight I'm going to talk about flowers in pots. And if you look at the right on the screen, you can see all sorts of really wonderful pots of flowers, which are just waiting to be purchased, I think. Um, basically, I'm going to talk about pots, soils, watering, maintenance, and plant choices. And the next slide is talking about pots. You can see a whole pile of pots in the corner, which are my pots, just waiting eagerly to get outside um, and have beautiful things blooming in them. There are pots for almost everything, from flowers to herbs to houseplants, small trees, ugly trees, shrubs, and invasive plants like mint or oregano. If you want a whole garden full of mint, plant it not in a pot. If you like mint and want it, a pot is the place for it to be. The same with oregano. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, I saw 
absolutely gorgeous pot full of grass. I said, oh, I want some of that. And I was warned that it was very invasive. So I said, okay, I still need that. So I bought it and I put it in a huge plastic tub, poked some holes in the bottom of the tub and then planted it in my garden. I dug a big hole and you couldn't tell that it wasn't, that it wasn't in the pot. And it was okay for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden I saw around the edge of the pot, this invasive grass growing up. So I um, dug up the pot and threw away the grass. So beware about invasive plants. Four pots. Pots are made out of all sorts of things. They're clay pots, plastic pots, brass cloth pots, ceramic, marble, cement, bags. In fact, bags are kind of interesting now. A lot of people grow potatoes in a bag. Um, tin pots, self-watering pots, really good if you forget about watering things or if you travel a lot, that would be very useful. All sorts of barrels, hanging pots, which are really lovely. Almost anything will work. And some pots even contain small trees, like the one on the right, which looks like it might be bay. I don't know. Maybe somebody else knows. Some things actually don't go in a pot, like watermelon, or other things that are great big that are vines, like cantaloupe or butternut squash. Or Obviously, street trees, that wouldn't work very well. But almost anything else will go in a pot. Some plants are better left alone, single in a pot, like the begonia on the left, which is really lovely. Begonias are fine in uh, larger pots, but not in that one, in that begonia is in our house and it bloomed, it was lovely. And I think African violets, like the one on the right, I have never seen an African violet with anybody else or any other plant, except maybe other African violets. So, but a lot of pots, oh, this, this is a special pot. Um, it's interesting, it's lovely, but be sure you own the card. Soil. Um, using garden soil, you can use garden soil, but it's a lot of work. You have to sift it to remove worms, that lost marble, a lollipop stick. Um, you have to add compost, fertilizer, etc. Maybe some vermiculite or um, perlite. Um, I remember when I was growing up, my father made all of our potting soil, but um, we had a huge compost pile and he was a landscape architect. So I think he thought he had to do that. But anyway, I would suggest that you buy potting soil. That is really much easier and probably much better. So with potting soil, as you can see, there's a picture of the array of potting soil that you can purchase at Home Depot. Um, do you want organic soil, not organic soil? Do you want it to contain fertilizer? Do you want it to contain water absorbing polymers? Do you not know what you want? Do you want to read about what you need? You should buy potting soil made specifically for pots, organic or non-organic. Um, some potting soil is labeled, fertilizer will last for a whole season. Okay, well, all right. Um, if it contains water absorbing polymers, those are pretty good, oh, sort of okay for hanging baskets because they need a lot of water. And in the summer, when it gets really hot, you may be watering two or three times a day in your hanging basket. Otherwise, I would suggest that you probably should not use water absorbing polymers and you may have trouble 
putting too much water and then the polymers expand and well, the problem with plant. With plant. Um, what goes into potting soil? Potting soil contains either perlite or vermiculite as an additive. That those little white things that you see in the soil you get at the conservatory are either perlite or vermiculite, and they make the soil a little bit looser. Um, many potting soils have peat moss or pine bark compost and fertilizer, and some maybe even have sand and other things to make them a little bit looser. Um, so if you really have some questions when you're at Home Depot or any other place buying soil, um, you might talk to the employee. Many employees know a lot. If you go out to the growing place, I don't think anyone knows more than the employees there. It's a terrific place to buy plants as well as soil and so forth. Um, and then be sure to remember what you purchased. Um, Keep a part of the bag which identifies the kind of soil you have. Let's see, two. Next, um, fertilizer. Fertilizer is very important. Um, does the soil you purchased have fertilizer? If so, do not add fertilizer at first. And certainly the water that you pour on the plants um, dilutes the fertilizer and makes fertilizer eventually run out the hole in the bottom of the pot. But depending on, on the size of the pot, um, if it does have fertilizer in it, wait at least three or four weeks before you add more fertilizer. You can over fertilize and kill your plants. And likewise, you can under fertilize and have the plants won't be happy either. Um, so again, if um, there is added fertilizer. Um, if you add fertilizer weekly or every two weeks, use about half the strength required so you won't over fertilize your plants. Um, let's see. There are um, most fertilizer is labeled with something like 10 10 10 or 10 30 10 or something like that. If you don't know, um, N stands for nitrogen, P for phosphorus, and K for potassium. If it says 10, 10, 10, that means the fertilizer has equal amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. If it says 10, 30, 10, or some other arrangement like that, it's, it means in this case that it has three times the amount of phosphorus which for flowers is good because phosphorus encourages flora, uh, flowers. So um, 103010 fertilizer if you're growing a lot of flowers. And there are several types of fertilizer. Um, the kind that you mix with water, the best known is the chemical fertilizer miracle Row. You just sprinkle a few grains of fertilizer in a watering can and then go water your plants. There's also pelletized fertilizer. Um, and it is like, it sort of looks like um, radish seeds. And you sprinkle that around the top of your pot. It's kind of hard to do if you have a lot of flowers growing in your pot and you can't get down to the bottom. And another problem with that is if you water it, all the pellets may slip to one side or the other. So you should be careful to put compost on top of the pelletized um, fertilizer if you're using that variety. Um, there, the pelletized one, the best known one is Osmocove. Um, other, the organic fertilizers, there's Jobs Organic, Dr. Earth, there's also something called Espomo, which I never heard of until I was looking up um, organic fertilizer. And it said that that company has been around since 1920. So I think about that. Or if you don't want to use fertilizer, you could add blood meal, bone meal, 
fish emulsion or compost on top of your pot. Um, be careful with fish emulsion. If you're putting that on a pot that's next to where you might be sitting, um, fish emulsion can smell. So you might <laughs> want to wait a little bit, put it in another spot and then move it back near the chair. To fill big pots, say you have something on your patio or on your terrace that has a huge, that's a huge pot that you don't want to move. You should remove about, oh, two or three inches of the soil off the top. And I would suggest that you should sit down beside the pot, spread some newspapers around and dump that soil that you're going to throw away onto the newspaper and then you can roll up the newspaper and throw um, that in the garbage. Meanwhile, add more soil to the top of the pot and um, then put your plants in that and you happily won't have to lift the big pot. Selecting pots, uh, plants that last, oh, I'm sorry, that's another thing. Go on to the next one. Filling pots. Um, long time ago, people used to put clay pot shards in the bottom of a pot um, or rocks to keep the soil from going out the hole. Well, um, that I guess is, discovered, is thought to be rather old fashioned. So now, if you really are worried about soil coming out of the screen, out of the hole, just put a little bit of screen over it or just ignore it because the holes aren't that big and you're not gonna get that much of a mess underneath. You should fill the pot up part way with soil and then add plants. And how to determine how far up, you want the soil to end within about a half an inch of the top of the pot. So if your plant is say three inches, has three inches of soil on the bottom of the, where the roots are, then I would suggest that you raise the soil, keep the soil within two and a half inches of the top of the pot and then put your plant in it. And if you see, a, when you take um, your plants out of the nursery pa uh, package and you see something that looks like this, um, that plant, which I think is a marigold, it's been in its nursery pot far too long. Um, it can't do anything except circle the roots around. And it's very important that you take your hands and pull the roots apart. And it's really fun because many of the roots are kind of not terribly breakable, but you can figure out how they clump together like that and then just pull them out so that you can grow down and out and make the plant really happy rather than unhappy like that. In fact, if you do plant something of that sort, um, the plant will continue to grow around and around and around and won't grow well. And in the fall, if you pull it up, you'll discover that the roots are still going around like that. And this same um, technique applies to planting transplants into the garden. Watering. Poke a finger in the soil. If it's dry, water. If not, don't. Just like people, plants can die um, from too much water. So early in the spring, once a week may be enough, enough. Although we may have had a, a rainy week. So in that case, you probably don't need to water at all. Um, in the middle of a very hot summer, as I said earlier, twice a day for a hanging pot may be just enough. Maybe three times is needed sometimes if it's really, really, really hot. And now for the fun part, um, choosing plants. 
thriller, filler, and spiller are the three words that are usually used to describe how to fill a pot. If you look at the plant on the right, um, there's a, some spikes at the top, that's the thriller. Um, there's a whole bunch of really wonderful flowers going around. And then there's a cascade falling over the edge of the pot. And it's in an absolutely gorgeous pot. I wish I had that. Um, but that's, you think about when you buy flowers for a pot, is it going to um, look like this or what? So to think about all things like this combination, which is really great too. It's a combination of pots, but the red and the canna lily at the top picks up the red at the petunias, I think is what that is going around. And then there's a lot of sweet potato vine, which is really fun. I would caution that you may have to do a lot of pruning if you plant sweet potato vines because they can get at least um, sometimes 10 feet long if you don't clip them off. But they're really nice, bright color to bring things together. So what to put in a container. Be sure to evaluate all sorts of things before you buy the plants. Um, this pot on the right is an example of something that's a mistake. That fern at the top is much too big. It looks like a hat on top of that pot. And the person who put this together didn't think about, it was probably, oh, I don't know, five or six inches high. And now it looks like it's probably a foot. And the um, filler around, um, those plants aren't going to grow any higher than that. So if they bought something that was bigger or something that would grow up, it would be okay to have a palm that big, but otherwise, uh-uh. So you need to think about the size of all the plants that you're going to buy. Will they fit together well? Also the growth rate. Some things just sit there for the whole season um, and other things grow oof, like that palm. Um, what time do they flower? Do you want something that's going to flower the whole time from June through October? Or um, do you want something that's going to flower on and off? Don't know, but if you want something that's going to flower forever, maybe you should grow petunias or something of that sort. And how high is it going to be? Um, is it going to blend nicely together or is it going to not do too well? Color and the surrounding color, if you're planting something on a black wall or a big brown door. Don't plant something dull, plant something light and fluffy so you can see it. And so it will emphasize maybe the plants as well as the door on the black wall. Do you want something that lasts the full season? Well, maybe. Or do you want to continue to plant new pots as the season goes on? So you plant one next week, do another, whatever. Watering schedule. Um, don't put cactus or succulents in the same pot with petunias. They won't be happy. If you water the petunia enough to keep it going, the cactus and the succulents will die. If you pay attention to the cactus and the succulents, well, the petunials, oof, not enough water for me, sorry, bye. So there are a whole bunch of things that you should think about before you put things in the container. Let's see. Next. I love this picture. It seems to me that it would be impossible to get into the house from here it looks like the door might be on the far right, or it might be straight behind that red chair. I think this is a wonderful combination of pictures, of, of plants rather. 
um, but it would be very hard to sit in either of the red chairs. So I think maybe in this case, they've gone a little overboard, but it's a nice overboard. I'm supposed to ask you, and I think it's a good idea to shop the plant sale. It closes May 2nd. Um, go to fopcon.org and then click on the plant sale. Um, I paged through it today and discovered that some of my favorite plants are still available. I love Cleome and the plant sale is offering a short Cleome. It can be either six or eight feet tall, but this one is about a foot. And it's a real thick plant, it's wonderful. So by Cleome, it's still available. And Perella is something else I really like. It's sort of like coleus, but it's, it's more um, stalk-like, but really, really pretty, a dark red plant. And the third one that I really like is Plectranthus. It um, has green leaves, oh, well, green leaves on the top and underneath they're brown. Um, and then some really um, shoots of flowers um, that are very small, but really very, very pretty. Um, you can grow it in the house too. Um, after the sun, after it's done growing outside, um, just clip off a couple of branches, just like coleus, and put it in water and then plant it in a pot after it um, grows roots. And it will bloom in the house as well as outside. And the next year you can put it outside again. So I hope there's some questions. And thank you. This has been Great. fun. Great. Okay. Thank you so much for um, sharing all that great information with us, Ellen, and for taking the time to do um, the presentation and pulling all that information together. And um, I know you are a um, lifelong gardener, and um, I don't know, was the inspiration from your father as a landscape architect? No, maybe. I think, well, I grew up with plants, as you can imagine. Well, landscape architects are different now because they know mostly about grading and ponds and things of that sort, and not um, a lot about horticulture. In fact, I think most of that isn't even taught for landscape architects, but that's the kind of LA my father was, so. Yeah, amazing. Um, Kayla, do you wanna um, lead us in any questions that we've got so far? And um, I certainly have some too, but I would like our guests to ask your questions in the chat. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so when, you know, we're thinking about those larger containers, like the really big ones, um, you know, you were kind of talking about maybe not filling dirt all the way to the bottom. And so, you know, there was some, some questions and some about, you know, in the bottom of the pot, can you actually just put like a crushed plastic containers to kind of fill it out? That way you have some drainage, but also you don't have to, you know, fill the whole pot with heavy plastic. Um, have, you, have you ever done something like that? Or do you have a, a better recommendation besides crushed no, plastic or? You can do that very easily. Some people put um, packing peanuts, which I think is awful because they fly around all the time. But you can do that too. And that works fairly well. Um, I was saying you can put anything in a pot or make a pot out of anything. If you want to take a, a big paper or a big cardboard box, you could line that with plastic and put something in it. It'd be kind of fun. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, I think someone else in the, the chat just recommended to line the container with bubble wrap. Right, that would work too. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So yeah, anything to kind of just like, you know, keep the water in, but then also have a drain and then mm -hmm. also have, okay. A um, couple other questions. So, um, you know, you you had that, I really liked that throwing the the thriller the spiller and the filler i, I like mm -hmm. how that broke down it kind of really clarified it for me um do you have any recommendations that you really like or anything that's like kind of up and coming that you you know have not seen 
a lot of that, you know, it's kind of like a little bit spicy or anything kind of interesting or just, just, you know, somewhere in somewhere to start, you know, some like tried and true. I don't, I don't really know. I, I, there's so many plants and they're, um, no, I think maybe I don't have any suggestions with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it almost kind of looks like some of the pictures, it almost kind of looks like you can't really go wrong as long as you stick to some of the, the you know, watering and size things that you delineated. So it sounds like you could kind of play around and... Oh, absolutely. You could just have fun do anything. And if you go, uh, one thing you really should do if you're going to buy plants, read the tag, because the tag will tell you that this is going to grow 10 feet or this is going to grow four inches. And that's very important when you're putting things together. Perfect. What about, do you have any recommendations for plants that like more cool weather plants? Here, we sort of have a problem with that. You can do that early in May and then we really don't know well, our weather's been so weird lately that um, you can't tell when it's going to get really, really hot. But for example, um, you can't grow cilantro in the summer, um, things like that, or um, so trying to think of some other things. Well, lettuce is awful in the summer. The summer is okay, but not very not good. Um, speaking of speaking of lettuce and speaking of, of cilantro, can you mix edibles into these arrangements or is it mostly oh, sure. just? Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, some things are really pretty, like um, cilantro is not bad, but um, in the summer, I don't think that would be very good. But you could have basil and um, all sorts of things in, in a pot and oregano sort of tail. So that would be fun to uh, cascade over the edge of a pot. I like that. I like that idea. That's awesome. Um, there's another question. It's maybe a bit specific, but um, they have a couple containers that are west facing and it's hot and sunny. Um, the containers are maybe a concrete or maybe some sort of other porous material. Um, and then the annuals seem to kind of burn up over the summer. Do you have any recommendations or any thoughts around that? Are they filling the pots, um, the concrete pots with soil or, oh, I didn't say that. You should, if you have something you can't drill a hole in, um, you should put a plastic pot or something else in the container and then put the plants in that so that water could drain out the bottom. Oh, that's um, a good, yeah, okay. And you certainly wouldn't want to, if you have a brass, a really lovely brass pot or um, something out of marble, you wouldn't want to drill a hole in it. So that would avoid that problem. Um, gotcha. Um, I don't know, maybe a lot of water or things that are really tough, like zinnias, for example, might look really good in something of that sort. Um, what else? Um, Lantana yes. will take a lot of sun. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm wondering also maybe if they, yeah. Yeah, that's a good, I like the zinnias, that's a good idea too. Um, what about, do you have any, what are your thoughts around insects like and, and potting containers? Like, do you have any suggestions around, you know, it seems some someone said that moths ate their petunias, um, but is there, <laughs> is there any like recommendations around, um, insects and, and these potted containers? That's really hard. I had a, a pot full of, no, it was at the edge of a bed, um, with some parsley that just disappeared overnight. Um, there's some caterpillars that really love parsley. And it was just stalks. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what to do about something like that overnight if you don't know that they're around. Um, you can, um, aphids are stupid and you can spray them with a hose and they'll go away. <laughs> Other things you, if you have um, stuff that eats um, 
oh dear, I'm losing my head, sort of, um, stuff that eats um, pasta. You can put little trays of beer and the slugs will drink the beer and get drunk and die. So you can hide those under pasta leaves. Um, we don't have too much trouble with Japanese beetles, but they are a problem. And if there are a whole lot of them, you have a terrible time, but you can pick them off individually. Okay. Um, and then another question. So someone has some pots and some flower boxes that they use year after year. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything they can do now before they plant to kind of help that soil or to pr prepare that soil for this year of planting? Well, you should take off part of the top of the soil, if it's old soil, and put in some fresh compost and some fresh soil. Um, as I was talking about, transplanting something in a huge thing you wouldn't care to move all the time since soil wears out too. Um, so that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, did you have, you said you had some questions too, Judy, or you're, you're, you're muted. I, my <laughs> question was mixing edibles in um, with uh, flowering plants. I've just never done it. Um, and I think it's just so creative and clever. Um, so I think I'm going to give it a try. I, I oh, do. Parsley yeah. seems like a hearty one. Um, maybe some basil. I don't know. Um, uh, rosemary, but you know, I'm, I'm just thinking that mm. not, not rosemary, maybe that should live on its own. I think that lives on its own best. Yeah. Yeah, but really. Like it... Parsley, oregano, basil could pair with some other flowering. Like that would be maybe the spiller. Mm -hmm. and then or filler mm -hmm. and then you could get something that's taller yeah I don't know I, I I'm I'm just sponging up everything you're saying <laughs> I also find the other thing and I think we talked about this in addition to reading the tags Ellen we talked about how knowledgeable the um, resources are wherever you're buying your plants and oh, yes in particular I think if you go to the smaller greenhouses the plant mm -hmm. obviously our plant sale has all sorts of um, master gardeners and expert growers um, and they can and and the staff of the conservatories you know of course immensely knowledgeable but I think if you're shopping at one of our local greenhouses um, you know, Good Earth and Empowering Gardens and wherever, um, like, where was the place you mentioned growing? Oh, the growing place like in Naperville. Like They're that. just wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I would urge anyone, or just take a drive out there to wander through it. it yeah. It's magical. Yeah, it is. Right. <laughs> and I think, you know, if you talk to the people um, that you're buying your plants from and ask them questions, you, you can solve a lot of your questions, mm -hmm. very specific plant questions right yeah. there with them uh, mm -hmm. buying. So yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And wash your pots in the fall. And then you won't have to do it in the spring when you put them away. It's a good idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. <laughs> Ellen, um, speaking of rosemary, um, rosemary is one of the ones that I think you can bring back inside um, to continue <sighs> to grow it's a tricky one, but are there any other plants that you could continue to grow inside that are, you know, one of those transferable or are these just short lived annuals that um, really just oh. have their season? Well, coleus, for example, you never have to buy more coleus. Um, just clip off some and then bring it inside in the fall and it'll root and then you can put it in soil and then next spring put it outside again um and the same with oh a lot of things like that if you uh, don't like canna lilies and you buy one uh well i like canna lilies but then you buy one and then you get 10 from that um, and you never have to buy more of those either and curly parsley seems to be sort of out of vogue I don't like to uh, to cook with it, but it sure is pretty. 
So you could put some curly parsley in one of your mixtures with flowers and plants too. Let's see. Great. There's also some suggestions in the chat about um, dwarf purple fountain grass is a good thriller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's also a suggestion as you're walking around, pay attention to the containers that are outside shops, downtown Chicago, et cetera. Take pictures of the ones you like and try to recreate at home. Great idea. Yep. And I've, I've actually never heard of the growing place. The the well, go there. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, I'm like, let's 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 get in the car and do this. Yeah. The place I used to go with my mom was the painter planter's palette. They planters. went out of business. I know I heard that and honestly like some of the plants that she has in her yard are just like one of a kind that she got from there so it's really disappointing but okay it's like the planter's palette used to be growing place okay you have to that's where we, it's it's right. really a special place they have two locations and um they have such a nice wide variety including a lot of natives which is what I always look for but they're they do have such a wide variety and um, you know, it's great for all ages. I mean, it's really um, a, a really nice um, experience to go there. So I'm going to um, interject <clears throat> for just a second. Um, I want to just thank everybody for joining us tonight. Um, our next talk will be on May 18th, where um, we will have Don Necrocious, who I think is still on our call tonight, and um, Sandy Lentz joining us to answer any of your gardening questions. So once you pick your plants and you get your pots going or you get your veggies going, you get your containers planted, you can come back and it will be an open conversation where we'll be answering your questions um, with our plant experts um, on this kind of Zoom format again for you. So that's Tuesday, May 18th. And then um, Kayla, we have um, a super interesting talk coming up on June 4th. These are free programs that we're bringing to you so that you can get better at gardening and appreciate the environment around us. And so on um, June 4th, we have um, Nina Lauren coming and she is an urban forager and she is going to share with us all of the tips and tricks on what to look for and um, what safe um, ways you can actually um, forage within um, the area that you live um, safely and following the guidelines, et cetera. So um, that one is going to be really exciting. So I just wanted to share um, those couple of things. And at this time, um, I'd love to open it up to folks if you want to unmute or um, ask any more questions. Um, we're here and I'd love to, you know, hear any more let's talk plants. I mean, I'm excited. I've got some on order. I think I'm going to probably go back and see what Ellen suggested. <clears throat> I think I did grow the perella last year and it was such a pretty plant. Mm -hmm. um, it has a really pretty leaf. Um, it's related to shiso, isn't it? The, the edible shiso? That I don't know. Okay. I, it's not edible. This one that we grow. I don't think it's the edible, no. one, but um, it's really pretty. So anybody want to um, say hello or give us your <laughs> tips? Any other um, container planting tips you want to share? I'm inspired to go try this now. Like I have this pot in my front yard that it's like, I've tried it one year and everything died. So I'm really excited to kind of like have this mix up. So thank you for these recommendations. I'm excited for this. <laughs> 